Welcome to the Florida Department of Transportation District 5's Preventative Maintenance Training Webinar. The goals of this training are to discuss best practices in maintenance program management, familiarize applicants with required maintenance plans and templates, prepare subrecipients to undergo a maintenance compliance review, and spark questions to bring to the November 14th Open House Grant Workshop. The department requires all grant recipients to implement a preventative maintenance program in compliance with defined standards. A compliant program will clearly describe how an agency inspects and maintains the vehicles and equipment it uses to provide passenger transportation. FDOT's goals in enforcing these requirements include ensuring safety for all passengers and operators, achieving capital and operating cost efficiency, and ensuring that a transit vehicle can provide service past the expected useful life. While some agencies may operate vehicles purchased outside of the FDOT managed grant programs, it is important to understand that all vehicles used for a passenger transport must be maintained to the standards defined in the approved preventative maintenance plan. Standards may vary depending on vehicle type only, and all such differences must be outlined in the plan. In this webinar, we will discuss FDOT's minimum standards for preventative maintenance of vehicles and equipment used in passenger transportation, associated management control requirements, and best practices for implementation. The FDOT Preventative Maintenance Standards Manual version 4.1 provides guidance for the implementation and management of a compliant transit vehicle and equipment maintenance program. The topics discussed in the manual include pre- and post-trip inspections, preventative maintenance process and inspections, written plans, forms, and files, the maintenance compliance review process, and technical assistance and resources. The manual can be downloaded from the Preventative Maintenance Planning, Training, and Technical Assistance Program website at prmpt.org. Pre- and post-trip inspections are daily inspections of critical vehicle components which are conducted before a vehicle departs its home facility for a passenger trip and upon its return when service is complete. The purpose of the pre- and post-trip inspection is to verify the vehicle is prepared to provide trip and returns from service without damage, to guarantee an avenue for daily communication between operators and management, and to fulfill requirements outlined in Rule 1490 of the Florida Administrative Code and the FDOT State Management Plan. FDOT has provided a pre- and post-trip inspection form template for your use. Agencies are permitted to customize their pre-trip inspection form template. However, the revised form must be approved by the FDOT to ensure that it meets minimum standards. Pre- and post-trip inspections may be conducted by the vehicle operator or by another staff member. However, it is preferable that the operator conduct these inspections to encourage familiarity with the vehicle and better understanding of mechanical issues that may arise during passenger transport. Training on how to properly complete a pre-trip inspection is required for all drivers and staff conducting inspections. This training must be documented and retained for the duration of employment. Videos and written guidance are available to support training sessions, but hands-on training is essential. Ideally, the agency trainer will demonstrate a pre-trip inspection on an agency vehicle while the trainee observes and discusses. Trainers should then verify that all trainees can successfully demonstrate a thorough and accurately reported inspection before they are permitted to conduct inspections unsupervised. Training should include instruction on the procedure to report identified deficient components. Reporting should occur immediately and in writing on the inspection form. If the defect is safety related, the vehicle cannot be used for passenger service until repairs are completed. There are many useful strategies to reinforce meaningful implementation of the pre-trip inspections. One strategy is to hold intermittent defect drills. This is when a supervisor purposely creates a known defect without the driver's knowledge. For example, by removing the first aid kit from the vehicle. If the driver then completes and submits a pre-trip report without identifying the missing first aid kit, retraining and other corrective action based on the agency's policy should be considered. Provide operators with sufficient time for a thorough inspection. 
A pre-trip inspection takes about 20 minutes to complete. Factor inspection time into shift scheduling to make sure drivers are not rushing through inspections to avoid being late for their first run or pickup time. Open communication about vehicle defects between operators and supervisors should be encouraged. It is better for an operator to overreport minor defects than to forgo reporting an issue based on the assumption it's not worth management's time. The last and simplest strategy is to check for lines. A sure sign of a rushed pre-trip is a line drawn through the checklist items instead of an individual check in each box. Train drivers to check off each component at the time it is inspected, before moving on to the next component. Managers should not sign off on a pre-trip inspection form that appears superficial or otherwise incomplete. This is the FDOT pre and post trip inspection form template. The inspector must provide vehicle specific information, including the agency's name, vehicle ID number, date of inspection, and the odometer reading for both pre and post trip mileage. The inspection should be identified as pre trip, post trip, or both. Some agencies allow both pre and post trip inspections to be recorded on the same form while others require a fresh blank sheet to be used for the post-trip. Either option is valid, as long as the findings from each inspection are easily distinguishable. In these columns, the driver must indicate whether the vehicle component is okay or defective, and provide clarifying comments as needed. All cells in this section must be completed. If an item is not applicable, it should be marked NA or with another symbol as defined in the PM plan and communicated during training. The inspector's name must be printed above driver's name. If repairs are completed internally, this section should include the technician's notes and signature along with any associated repair documentation. If the repair service is outsourced, this section may be left blank or used to summarize the attached backup documentation. Pre and post inspection forms should always be signed by personnel with a supervisory or managerial level of responsibility. The second page provides space to locate and describe vehicle body damage, such as dents or scratches. The vehicle diagram should be updated to match the vehicle model being inspected, such as cutaway bus or minivan, to enable more accurate damage location reporting. While the second page is not required, it is a known best practice for drivers to conduct exterior walk-around checks with each inspection. Completed pre-trip inspection forms with no defects may be discarded after a minimum of 14 days. Inspection forms containing noted defects must be maintained on file for the life of the vehicle. Corresponding repair documentation should be attached to the pre-trip form that identifies the defect and maintained for the life of the vehicle. All pre-trip forms must be signed by both the inspector and an overseeing manager or supervisor. FDOT requires that agencies conduct Routine Preventative Maintenance, or PM inspections, on all passenger service vehicles. These inspections must meet or exceed the Original Equipment Manufacturer, or OEM, recommendations and the FDOT requirements established in the Preventative Maintenance Standards Manual. The purpose of a robust PM inspection program is to prolong the useful life of the vehicle, to proactively identify and repair potential failures before they occur, and to reduce overall vehicle downtime, improve passenger safety, and reduce long-term maintenance and replacement costs. The importance of a proactive preventative maintenance plan cannot be overstated. Consider the following scenario. A scheduled PM inspection found that bus one needed new brake pads. Before bus one was returned to service, the brake pads were replaced for a total cost of around $250. On the other hand, Bus 2's brake pads were not replaced until a breakdown occurred. This resulted in additional parts replacement, costing the agency over $1,300, without even factoring in potential roadside assistance and towing expenses. Preventative maintenance inspections should be scheduled in a progressive method at a predetermined target mileage interval. These intervals may be chosen by the agency, but should not exceed 6,000 miles. The ABC inspection method is composed of three progressive or cumulative levels. 
This means that each successive level contains all components included in the level below it while adding more components for increasingly comprehensive inspections. A-level inspections have the fewest components and C-level inspections have the greatest number of components. Inspections should be performed in a A, B, A, C sequence. This table shows the target inspection type sequence and mileage at which each inspection is due using a 6,000 mile interval. Although some agencies use dates to schedule PM inspections, mileage intervals are strongly recommended, especially for high mileage vehicles. The Federal Transit Administration, or FTA, requires an 80% on-time inspection threshold to be maintained for compliance. Agencies may elect to use shorter mileage intervals, but this should be specified within their maintenance plan and any outsourced maintenance providers should be provided with that schedule. Shorter mileage intervals may also result in potentially unnecessary cost. Shown here is the FDOT Preventative Maintenance Inspection Report Template. This form should be used to complete any of the three PM inspection types, A, B, or C. Cells are shaded to indicate where a component does not apply to that column's inspection type. It is vital that the mechanic that completes the inspection completes all required components for the applicable inspection level. If an item is not applicable, this must be noted, not simply left blank. Agencies may customize the PM inspection form to meet their needs. However, the form must include at a minimum all items listed on the FDOT template and must receive approval from the department. When a defect is identified during an inspection, the finding must be first documented on the inspection form. Safety defects identified during an inspection must be repaired before the vehicle resumes passenger service. FDOT has provided the list of components considered to be safety sensitive in the Preventative Maintenance Standard Manual. Defects that are not safety related may be repaired at a later date if necessary to await parts on order or to avoid service interruptions. In these cases, the PM inspection form reporting the defect should document all progress towards completing the repair, including action taken and anticipated repair completion date. For all defects, work orders, or invoices documenting repair must be maintained in the vehicle history file. Repair documentation should be attached to the corresponding inspection form that reported the defect. Wheelchair lifts and ramps are inspected during several cycles. There are three types of wheelchair lift inspections. During every pre and post trip inspection, the lift must be examined and cycled to ensure it's operable. All A, B, and C preventative maintenance inspections must include several wheelchair lift component checks, including checking for hydraulic leaks and recording the lift cycle count. And of course, an annual inspection must be conducted and documented by a manufacturer certified service provider. Lift defects identified during inspection or regular use are considered safety sensitive. If a wheelchair lift is found to be inoperable or malfunctioning, the vehicle must be taken out of service until repairs are completed. Agencies that operate vehicles equipped with lifts or ramps must describe all lift-related maintenance activities in the Preventative Maintenance Plan or Transportation Operating Procedures. Fire suppression systems and extinguishers are among the most important and overlooked vehicle safety feature that require specialized maintenance. FDOT has developed the Fire Suppression and Fire Extinguisher Maintenance Requirements Guidance Document to assist agencies in maintaining this potentially life-saving equipment. There are several types of fire safety systems that may be on board a transit vehicle. The most common equipment is an ABC powder type onboard fire extinguisher. All vehicles used to provide passenger transportation are required to keep a fire extinguisher in the passenger compartment in an area that is easily accessible to the driver and passengers. Fogmaker and Amirex brand fire suppression systems are specifically designed to extinguish fires in the vehicle's engine compartment. Cutaway buses purchased from the TRIPS contract will come equipped with a fire suppression system. Fire safety equipment must receive regular inspections, including during daily pre- and post-trip inspections. Both extinguishers 
and suppression systems, if equipped, are required components of these inspections. Monthly inspections are required only for Americ systems based on the manufacturer's recommendations. All fire safety equipment types must undergo annual inspection by a certified technician. Americ systems require inspection by a certified technician every year or every 20,000 miles of vehicle operation, whichever comes first. The technician must mark the inspection date on the equipment tag or sticker to verify the next inspection due date. Fire safety equipment defects identified during inspection or regular use are considered safety sensitive. If fire safety equipment is found to be inoperable or malfunctioning, the vehicle must be taken out of service until repairs are completed. Agencies must describe all fire safety equipment maintenance activities in the preventative maintenance plan or transportation operating procedures. Road call information sheets are used to document defects or failures reported while a vehicle is in service. Road calls should be tracked separately from scheduled maintenance activities and periodically analyzed to identify trends. A road call information sheet template is available for download at prmpt.org. Like scheduled maintenance inspection reports, these sheets must be attached to repair documentation and maintained on file for the life of the associated vehicle. A vehicle's preventative maintenance record should be maintained in a file. This red folder graphically illustrates one method that you may use as a model for folder organization. No particular file structure is required, but files should be organized and easily searchable. Files may be maintained in either a paper or electronic format. Electronic fleet management programs may help streamline maintenance program activity tracking, but a simple spreadsheet model can also prove effective. All preventative maintenance records must clearly relate to each other and back to the subject vehicle. The vehicle file should contain all pre and post trip inspection forms from the most recent 14 days of service. Pre and post trip inspection forms with defects noted must be accompanied by their associated work order or invoice documenting the repair. These inspection forms and backup documentation must be kept on file for the life of the vehicle. The maintenance milestone form may be used to track schedule and actual PM inspections. All PM inspection forms must be maintained on file for the life of the vehicle, regardless of whether any defects were identified. Work orders and invoices associated with documented defects should be attached or otherwise linked to the inspection form on which the defect was noted. All work orders and invoices must be kept on file for the life of the vehicle. As applicable, repair documentation should be attached to the inspection report or road call report noting the defect being repaired. Other documents that should be kept on with maintenance records include a copy of the current vehicle registration, insurance, motor carrier compliance office form, and the most recent annual safety certification. Each of these items must be kept up to date and reference the correct vehicle. The Federal Transit Administration and the FDOT State Management Plan require agencies who fund their transportation program using federal or state dollars to develop and implement a Comprehensive Preventative Maintenance Plan, or PM Plan. The plan must describe in detail all aspects of the agency's maintenance program policies, procedures, and practices. The maintenance plan is considered a living document, meaning that it should be continuously updated and revised as procedures and practices evolve. Whenever the plan is updated, the subrecipient must submit the revised plan to the FDOT. FDOT requires specific maintenance plan elements based on the type of maintenance conducted at the agency. There are several types of maintenance plans. An in-house maintenance plan should be used if all maintenance activity is conducted internally by agency personnel. An outsourced maintenance plan is required if all maintenance activity is outsourced to one or more third-party vendors. A combination plan is used by agencies whose maintenance programs leverage both internal personnel and third-party service providers to carry out inspections and repairs. A combination plan must outline which types of inspections or repairs are completed internally and which are outsourced to a third party. This is the most common plan type. 
Many agencies can accommodate minor needs such as light bulb replacement or oil changes with internal resources, but must outsource major services and specialized equipment inspections that require completion by a manufacturer certified technician. A facility and equipment plan describes how an agency maintains transportation related facilities and non-vehicle equipment. The last type of maintenance plan is the Transportation Operating Procedures, or TOP. A TOP is a comprehensive transportation program, safety, operations, and maintenance policy document. A TOP is required for all agencies receiving Section 5310 and no other state or federal transit grant funding. These Section 5310 only agencies are not required to develop a standalone preventative maintenance plan, but may choose to do so if desired. Templates for each of these maintenance plan types are available for view and download on the PRMPT website, prmpt.org. Some agencies have a small in-house maintenance shop or hire a contractor to perform a portion of the preventative maintenance inspection requiring tools and equipment not available to them. Vehicle components that require specialized equipment for inspection are typically sent to an outside maintenance vendor and or facility. It is essential for agency protection that the agency establish an agreement with the vendor and undergo the appropriate procurement process. Cost of outsource preventative maintenance expenses cannot be reimbursed under any grant until an executed service agreement is submitted to the department. This agreement will obligate the vendor to inspect vehicles in accordance with FDOT standards. Please keep in mind that all procurement requirements apply when selecting a vendor that is going to provide vehicle maintenance services. When an agency applies for a capitalized preventative maintenance award, those funds will be provided via a notice of grant award and reimbursed. When outsourcing maintenance services, it is vital agencies conduct proper oversight of its vendor. FDOT will look to the recipient of the funds to see that preventative maintenance program is being followed. Agency representatives should implement processes in which transportation management carries out oversight of the selected vendor. Examples of sound quality control methods include review of completed preventative maintenance inspection form to ensure that the mechanic verified each individual item on the checklist, as well as checking that the correct odometer and vehicle information was entered. Another best practice is to review work orders that stem from the preventative maintenance information to make sure that all issues identified in the inspection are being addressed. Once an outsourced maintenance facility has been selected, a service agreement should be executed. A service agreement template has been developed by the PRMPT program for your use. This agreement includes the prescribed scope of services, language for agreement periods, how to handle warranty repairs, scheduled maintenance, and identification of costs for services. The service agreement should outline each party's responsibilities to ensure that PM inspections are completed in compliance with FDOT standards. The template contains language outlining areas for each party to describe how and when inspections should be conducted. The agreement template also includes language regarding cost and escalation clauses as well as instructions for how each vehicle component should be inspected. Outsourced maintenance technicians that are procured with a service agreement are eligible and encouraged to attend regular training workshops sponsored by the FDOT. These regional training workshops address inspection and repair of specific vehicle components found on these types of vehicles such as wheelchair lifts, air conditioning components, and fire suppression components. The trainings are offered annually, regionally, and are free of charge. Mechanics who attend these trainings receive certification and remain up to date on the vehicle component features. The department conducts two types of review to verify maintenance compliance. Triennial maintenance reviews are conducted every three years as part of the FDOT triennial review. This review applies to all passenger service vehicles regardless of funding source. Vehicle inventory reviews are conducted once a year or twice a year depending on the size of the agency's fleet. Maintenance compliance review elements vary depending on which type of FTA funding your agency receives. Agencies that receive only Section 5310 funding are subject to the review of maintenance plans, equipment records or vehicle history files, 
on-site vehicle safety inspections, preventative maintenance inspection records, pre-trip inspection records, warranty records, and vehicle appearance. Agencies that receive Section 5307 funding, but not Section 5311 funding, are subject to the same items as 5310 only agencies, plus a review of annual inspections and roll call records. Agencies that receive Section 5311 funding are subject to the same as 5310 and 5307 agencies, plus a review of the maintenance shop facilities and parts inventory. During triannual maintenance reviews, the review team will evaluate the success of your program based on the review of the documentation submitted. The team will request preventative maintenance inspections included completed preventative maintenance inspection forms and corresponding documentation of the repairs made due to defects found during this inspection. Pre-trip post-trip inspections include completed pre-trip post-trip inspection forms with identified defects along with corresponding documentation of repairs made due to defects found during this inspection. Repairs include all scheduled and unscheduled repair work orders, invoices that document date, mileage, description of work performed, and the name of the company conducting the repair. Warranty includes all warranty repair and claim documentation. At least 10% of the vehicle fleet will be chosen at random to receive an on-site vehicle safety inspection by PRMPT staff. A minimum of three vehicles will be inspected for agencies who have less than 30 vehicles. Vehicle safety inspections examine functionality of safety-sensitive vehicle components. If significant safety-sensitive defects are identified during this inspection, the vehicle may be removed from service until the necessary repairs are made. Vehicle history files will be examined for at least 20% of the vehicle fleet. The files will be chosen at random by PRMPT staff based on the agency's vehicle fleet roster. All maintenance activities will be examined for a 12-month period prior to the maintenance review. If there is a limited amount of information available for this time period, then maintenance activities will be examined for 18, 24, or 36 months prior to the maintenance review to gather more data. Maintenance activities examined include all preventative maintenance inspections that occurred in that time period, all repairs made both scheduled and unscheduled during that time period, timeliness of preventative maintenance inspections, timeliness of oil changes if conducted separately, inspection forms compliance with FDOT minimum maintenance requirements, maintenance activity trends such as repeat repairs, unscheduled repairs occurring shortly after preventative maintenance inspections conducted, excessive in-service failures, and adherence to procedures and practices described in the maintenance plan or TOP. Completed pre-trip, post-trip inspection forms will be reviewed for the 14-day period prior to the maintenance review. Pre-trip, post-trip inspection forms will be examined to ensure forms include all vehicle components required by FDOT to be inspected, safety-sensitive defects identified on the forms have been repaired in a timely manner, including vehicles removal from service if the defect impacts passenger safety. Forms include proper defect identification. Defects identified during the on-site vehicle safety inspection will be compared to the pre-trip, post-trip inspection forms to ensure thorough inspections are being conducted. PRMPT staff will observe pre-trip, post-trip inspections being conducted by drivers when scheduling permits. Agencies are required to pursue warranty repairs when applicable. Vehicle history files will be examined for documentation of warranty claims and invoices. Maintenance activities will be analyzed to identify any repairs that potentially could have been covered under warranty. Vehicle appearance should reflect positively on an agency. Vehicles will be inspected for exterior and interior cleanliness during the maintenance review. Agencies must also have a policy regarding bloodborne pathogen and resulting vehicle sterilization. The policy must be consistent with OSHA standards regarding these incidents. This will be verified on site by reviewers. Agencies who receive 5311 funding and have in house maintenance departments will be reviewed for maintenance shop procedures and practices. The elements of this review will consist of adherence to facility and equipment maintenance plan maintenance shop safety equipment and procedures, 
maintenance shop staffing, workflow procedures and practices, materials handling, and parts inventory procedures and practices. Annual safety inspections should be conducted at least once annually according to Chapter 1490.009 of the Florida Administrative Code. Sea level preventative maintenance inspections can serve as an annual safety inspection or the inspection can be conducted separately. Transit agencies should document and monitor in-service failures or road calls. The procedures for tracking and monitoring roll calls should be described in the maintenance plan. In-service failures or road calls will be addressed by the PRMPT staff according to the procedures and practices described in the maintenance plan. Vehicle inventory reviews are conducted once every year or every other year depending on the size of the agency's fleet. This review consists of physical inspection of asset and review of the agency's preventative maintenance documents. If significant safety sensitive defects are identified during this inspection, the vehicle may be removed from service until the necessary repairs are made. In summary, outsourced maintenance activity should be done only after FDOT's requirement of a maintenance agreement is in place. When selecting vendors for outsourced maintenance, procurement requirements apply. Vendor oversight is key to success of an effective maintenance program. FDOT will look to the agency to ensure that proper implementation is being carried out. An agency's vehicle maintenance program must consist of a system to document all preventative maintenance inspections, pre- and post-trip inspections, and repairs. FDOT recognizes that a preventative and proactive maintenance program is critical to providing safe and efficient public transportation services. To support agencies, the department has developed extensive technical assistance resources, including guidance manuals and templates, tracking spreadsheets, training materials, free or reduced cost training opportunities. Additionally, the department supports the Florida Transit Safety and Operations Network, or the FTSON, and the Florida Transit Maintenance Consortium, also known as the FTMC which provides agencies a form in which to discuss challenges and opportunities with peer agencies and subject matter experts from across the state. The department encourages all agencies to visit the FTSON and the FTMC at their websites shown on this slide. This concludes our webinar session for vehicle preventative maintenance training. Thank you for participating in this training session. Please reach out to your FDOT project coordinator with any questions.